Today in the workshop, we'll be looking at an essential robotics component, the HCSR04 ultrasonic sensor. After we find out how it works, we'll hook it up to an Arduino and put it through its paces on the workbench. We'll look at a couple of different ways you can code for this versatile device, and we'll even add an additional component to our circuit to make our results far more accurate. So there's a lot to cover today, so grab your sensors and welcome to the workshop. Hey, welcome to the workshop. Today we're going to be working with this little bug-eyed monster. It's an HCSR04 ultrasonic distance sensor. Now, as its name implies, this little device uses ultrasonic sound in order to measure the distance between itself and the nearest solid object. And as a result, this has become a staple in robotics projects because the last thing we want is for our little robots to be driving into walls and things. Now, we're going to look at a couple of different ways that we can code for this sensor, and one of them is using a library called New Ping. So if you're new to the Arduino and haven't used a library before, well, you're going to learn something. We'll put it on the workbench, see how accurate it is. We'll actually look at a couple of different ways we can hook it up to an Arduino, and we'll even add an extra component to it to make it a lot more accurate than it is out of the box. So there's a lot to cover today, so let's start by looking at how this device actually works. The HCSR04 consists of two ultrasonic transducers. One is used as a transmitter, and the other one is used as a receiver. Now, in normal operation, the transmitter sends out a series of ultrasonic pulses. These are not picked up by the receiver despite its proximity, because ultrasonic signals are very directional. However, if a surface is in front of the device, it will reflect the signal back to the receiver. The time delay between the transmission and receiving the signal is used to calculate the distance. So a longer time delay will be a longer distance, and the shorter time delay indicates a shorter distance. So how is this device actually hooked up? Well, the HCSR04 has four pins on it. VCC, which is the 5-volt power connection. Trig, which is the trigger pin, and this is the input to the device. Echo, the echo pin is the output from the device. And finally, a ground pin. Now, to work the device, the trigger pin is sent a 5 volt, 10 microsecond pulse. The device then transmits 8 ultrasonic pulses. These are at 40 kilohertz each. The echo pin will output a pulse between 150 microseconds to 25 milliseconds. And that pulse width is used to calculate the distance. It'll output a pulse of 38 milliseconds if there is no object detected. Now let's look at the timing. Note that this is not the scale. First, we will send the trigger pin a 10 microsecond pulse, and we transmit eight ultrasonic pulses. Now in this case, there is no object, so the echo is 38 milliseconds. However, if we put an object in front of the device, we'll see the difference. Now again, we'll send a trigger pulse of 10 microseconds and send out our ultrasonic pulses. Only now the signal has been reflected back and comes back with a timing of 500 microseconds. We can use this now to determine the distance. Ultrasonic signals travel at the speed of sound, and at 20 degrees Celsius, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. Now remember, the time we're measuring with the HCSR04 is for a return trip, so we'll need to divide this in half to calculate the actual distance. Let's take a look at the variables that we'll be using in our equation. Delta T is the time delay, C is the speed of sound, and D is the distance we'll be measuring. And as a reminder, again, the speed of sound is 343 meters per second. 
Now we're going to be measuring in centimeters, so let's change the units to make it easier. 343 meters per second is 0 0.0343 centimeters per second. Another way of looking at this is that sound takes 29.154 microseconds to travel a centimeter, and you can consider that to be the pace of sound. Now, if you're not familiar with the metric system, 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch, so you can just convert the result at the end if you need to. Now, because we know both the speed of sound and the pace of sound, there are two different ways we can calculate the result. Our first method will use the speed of sound. And so the formula is the distance equals the time divided by 2 multiplied by the speed of sound. Now let's put in the values we just got. So in our case, it's 500 divided by 2 times 0 0.0343, which equals 8.575 centimeters. Now the second method involves the pace of sound. And in this case, the formula is the distance is the time divided by 2 divided by 29.154. So let's plug in our figures again, and we'll come out to the same result. The distance is 8.575 centimeters. Now, for those of you who are metrically impaired, 8.575 centimeters is the same as 3.376 inches. All right, now we've seen how the ultrasonic sensor functions. Let's start to work with it. Before we do, though, I want to show you the little test arrangement I've made on my workbench to test the accuracy of the sensor. What I've done is I've taken an HCSR04 and mounted it at the end of this long stick. I've put it onto an angle bracket, and I'm actually holding it on just with Velcro. I've aligned it with this meter stick that I've got here. This is a one meter stick, and it'll let me measure the distance between its and the sensors of the HCSR04. I've lined up the end of the stick with the front of the unit here. Now, I'm going to use this piece of wood simply to reflect the ultrasonic signal back to the device, and we can see how accurate it actually is. Now, if you're wondering about all this mouse pad business I have on here, that's simply so I can place an Arduino and a solderless breadboard beside the device and do my wiring. So now that you've seen my test setup, let's actually hook this up and start coding with an Arduino and check out how accurate it is. Hooking up the HCSR04 to the Arduino is actually pretty simple. I've connected the 5 volts of the HCSR04 to the Arduino's 5 volt output. I connected the trigger pin to the Arduino's digital pin number 10. I connected the echo pin to Arduino pin 13, and I've connected the ground to the Arduino's ground. Now you can use two different I.O. pins if you wish. All you'll have to do is change the sketch. So let's take a look at the first sketch that we'll be running with the HCSR04. Now we start off by defining the connections that we've made to the trigger pin and the echo pin. So I've defined trig pin as pin number 10, the connection to the trigger on the HCSR04, and the echo pin uh, defined as pin number 13. Now if you wish you can use different digital I.O. pins on your Arduino. Just change the 10 and the 13 to match the way that you've wired your sensor. Then we define a couple of floats. Now floats are floating point variables. These are numbers that can contain decimal points. And I've got two of them. One for duration. That's going to define the duration of the signal we get back from the HCSR04, and the other one for distance, and this is going to be our final result in centimeters in this case. Now, we'll start in the setup. 
we're going to be using Arduino serial monitor to monitor the results. So we'll set up the serial monitor at 9600 baud, and then we'll define our two pins. Our trigger pin is an output because we are sending pulses out from the Arduino to the device, whereas our echo pin is the input back from the device. Now that we've defined that, let's actually go into the loop. Now, if you recall, the first thing we have to do with the HCSR04 is send it a 10 microsecond pulse, and we're going to do this manually. We'll use a digital write to the trigger pin and send it low, and we're sending it low for 2 microseconds. Now, that value is not particularly critical. We just want to make sure we start off in a low state. Then after that, we're going to send the trigger pin high for 10 microseconds. This is the high part of our 10 microsecond pulse, and then we'll send it low again. So this, in effect, creates a 10 microsecond pulse to the trigger pin. Now we're going to measure the response we get back. So our duration is going to use Arduino's pulse in command, which very conveniently measures the duration of a pulse, which is exactly what we want. Now it has two parameters, the pin that we're monitoring, which is the echo pin, the pin that's connected to the echo out from the HCSR04, and high. What that means is that we are measuring the amount of time that the pulse stays high, because the pulse in command can equally be used for measuring low pulses, but in our case we want to know how long it stays high. Now that we've got the duration, we are going to calculate it using the speed of sound. We use 343 meters per second as our speed of sound, and so we're going to calculate the distance with that. Now remember, the distance that we're measuring is going to be half of the result because we actually have to send the signal out and wait for it to bounce back. So we're going to divide the duration by 2 and then multiply it by our speed of sound. And then after that, we simply send the results to the serial monitor. Now, the sensor has a maximum range of 400 centimeters and a minimum range of 2 centimeters. So any readings outside of that range are invalid. So we're just going to print out of range. Otherwise, we're just going to print the distance in centimeters. We're going to put a couple of delays in there and uh, we're going to go and do the loop over and over again. So this should constantly just read back the distance between the sensor and the device that's reflecting the signal. So now let's see how it works. Okay, let's put our first sketch to the test. I've got my reflecting surface, so let's start the serial monitor and see how accurate this actually is. So we start the serial monitor, just up in Tools, Serial Monitor. And it's reading some readings back. Now these are probably spurious readings from items on my workbench. So let's put this down at the, let's say, 30 centimeter mark. So here I am at 30 centimeters. And I'm getting some readings. There was a 30.01 in there. A lot of it has to do with how steady I hold this thing. So they fluctuate a bit, but it's very close to 30. Let's move it down a little bit. Let's go down to 10 centimeters. Now here at 10 centimeters, which is roughly 4 inches, again there's a 9.91, 9.98. It seems a little low, but it's close. At 20 centimeters then, 19.16, 19.57. A few very close, but it seems a little bit off. And let's back up to maybe 50 centimeters now. And we're a little low but uh, not terrible. So it's actually giving a pretty good ballpark range, but it can be out, it seems, by at least a half a centimeter in some particular cases. Now I'm going to show you some tricks you can use to increase the accuracy of this, but before I do, I want to show you another way that you can write a sketch for this using a library called New Ping. Libraries are additional functions that you can add to your Arduino, and the New Ping library has been specifically made to have functions for ultrasonic sensors like the HCSR04. So let's take a look at that now. So here's our sketch rewritten to use the New Ping library. Now when you use a library, you need to include the library. So you use an include statement to include newping.h. .h is the extension for a library. 
After that, we'll define a few variables. We define trigger pin as pin 10 and echo pin as pin 13. Again, if you've used different pins on your Arduino, simply change the 10 and 13 to match the ones that you've used. And a third variable called max distance. Now, the New pin library is actually usable by a number of different ultrasonic sensors, some of which have different capabilities than the HCSR04. The HCSR04 has a maximum distance of 400 centimeters, which is why I've used 400 here. But for a different sensor, you might want a different value. Calling new ping is very, very simple. We just do new ping sonar and then the trigger pin, the echo pin, and max distance. That's all there is to it. So it's very simple to call the new pin library. Then we define a float of distance. We don't need duration in this case because new ping is going to handle all of this internally. Our setup is very simple. We just start the serial monitor, nothing else, and then we go into the loop. And the loop is also very, very simple. Our distance simply equals sonar.ping underscore cm. And this will give us our distance in centimeters. New ping can also give you the distance in inches, if you wish. And then, once again, we send the results to the serial monitor. Before we send this up to our Arduino, let's make sure that it compiles correctly. I always like to do that. And we do that with a little check mark here, which will check for code errors and other things. So let's check it and see what happens. And as you can see, bad things happened. There's a problem with our sketch over here, and the problem is we've included a library, but this library has not actually been installed in our Arduino IDE. And so we need to do this. What we will do is we will go and get the library. Now there are a couple of sources for the new ping library. You can get it off of Bitbucket or you can get it off of GitHub. I'm going to take this off of GitHub. So I have the links by the way at the bottom of the video and also I've got the links on the article on the DroneBot Workshop website so you can get the link for that. So I'm going to go to GitHub to the new ping and I'm going to download a zip file of the library. I'm going to download the zip file, and in this case, just saving in my downloads directory. And then I'm going to go back to my Arduino IDE. Now what I need to do is go under Sketch, and Include Library, and Add, there it is, Add Zip File. And I'm going to go into my downloads, and there's new ping. So let's add that. And the library has been added to my library menu, a very little notice here. So let's try compiling this again and see what happens. And that looks a bit better, it seems to compile. So let's send this up to our Arduino and see how the new ping library functions. Okay, I've got my reflecting surface, I'm going to give the new ping a try. Now, let's first of all start off at, uh, let's say, 30 centimeters. And looking on the, thir on the serial monitor, I've got 30 centimeters right on the nose. Isn't that great? Let's move down to 20 centimeters. Again, 20 centimeters. But you might be noticing something here. Let's go up to 40 centimeters. And great, we're getting a reading of 40. Oh no, we're getting a read of 39. Oh no, it's 40. Can you see what I'm talking about? The new ping library is only resolving down to a one centimeter resolution, and as it turns out, this is by design. The developer of the library felt that since most of these sensors have an accuracy of plus or minus half a centimeter, that there was no reason to include fractional centimeters. However, this may or may not be true in your application. In some applications, like a robot that you're trying to keep from driving into a wall, a centimeter resolution is probably fine. If you're building a measurement device, though, it's completely out of the question. Also, keep in mind that new ping can be run in imperial mode. In imperial mode, the resolution will be within an inch, and an inch is quite a variance. So, you might think that the new ping library itself is not really that useful if you want to do something accurate. But there actually is a way that we can get more accuracy from the new ping library.
So here's our new ping sketch rewritten to calculate duration instead of distance. What we'll do is we'll use the new ping library to obtain the duration of the signal and then use the same mathematics we did before to calculate the distance. So this is really just an amalgamation of the first and second sketches that we've looked at today. The uh, first thing we do is we start off the same as the last sketch. We include the new ping library and we set up the same variables, trigger pin, echo pin, and maximum distance. Then we'll call new ping in the same fashion by passing it the trigger pin, echo pin, and maximum distance. Now we define two floats as we did in the original sketch because once again we are going to use duration to calculate distance. In the setup routine we'll start the serial monitor and then we get into the loop. And this is where we see the one difference in the new ping command. You will remember in the last sketch that sonar.ping underscore cm returned the value of the distance in centimeters. But if you use sonar.ping instead you will get the duration back. And then from then, it's simply the same thing that we did in our first sketch. We've used the duration, divided it by 2, and multiplied it by the speed of sound. And then we send the results out to the serial monitor. So let's see how this has improved our new ping sketch. Okay, I've got my reflecting surface, and I'm ready to test our new ping sketch using duration instead of distance. So we'll start off, and I'm going to place this at the 20 centimeter mark. And 19.74, 19.81, it's close. 40 centimeter mark. It really depends how I hold this because I'm probably not holding it that steady, but it looks like I'm plus or minus a centimeter on that one there. Uh, 10 centimeters, 9.86, 9.79, 9.93, so we're quite close there. And let's go all the way back to 60 centimeters over here. And 59.25, etc. So as you can see, we've brought back the uh, decimal points, but we still haven't got complete accuracy. Now, as I promised earlier, I will show you a way that you can improve upon that accuracy. But before I do, there are some other functions in the new ping library that I'd like to take a look at. So the first one is called iterations. So here is yet another version of our new ping demonstration. In this particular case, we're going to use iterations. To iterate means to go over something more than once, and that's exactly what the new ping library will do. When you use the iteration function, it'll actually go and take measurements more than once. By default, it'll do it five times, but you can actually ask it to do it as many times as you want. It'll take those readings, it'll throw away any invalid readings, and then take the average of the other readings, and this will improve the accuracy slightly, and I'll also take care of situations like we have with my board, which is a bit shaky and all that. It should smooth out the readings a bit. So this sketch is identical to the last sketch with one particular exception, and that is we have an inter that I defined as the iterations, and I've defined it as five in iterations, which is the default anyway. You can change this and experiment if you want to see the results. And then the duration is sonar ping median, and then we have the number of iterations in here. So this is really the only difference between this sketch and the last sketch. And then once again, of course, we calculate the distance based on the duration and display it on the serial monitor. So let's take a peek at this sketch and see if it's an improvement upon the last one. Okay, let's go and test our iteration sketch and see if it has any improvement over the last one. Now we're going to put this down at about the 20 centimeter mark. And I'm getting readings like 19.74, 19.33. One thing I do notice is that they're not jumping around as much while I'm shaking the board. So the iterations seem to be smoothing things out a bit. Let's go over to 40. 39.84, 39.85. It's close, but not exact. Let's go a little closer, down at 10 perhaps. 10 on the button over here, that's nice. 9.86, pretty darn close, and uh, finally maybe up at about 50. 49.24, 49.89, we're close. 
Now, as you can see, our readings are close, but they're not completely accurate. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Some of them, of course, being the way that I'm just holding my board. But there's another source of inaccuracy in our circuit, and it has nothing to do with the HCSR04. It actually has to do with the speed of sound. Okay, so what's wrong with the speed of sound? Well, the thing is, sound travels at different speeds in different mediums. It also travels at different speeds at different temperatures. For an example, and this is really going back into my youth over here, when I was a teenager, I went to a Pink Floyd concert at a very large stadium, and I was sitting at the back of the stadium. Now, every time Roger Waters, the bassist for Pink Floyd, would pluck his bass guitar, our seats would vibrate, and then we'd hear the sound. It was rather unnerving, to say the least. And that's because sound travels faster in cement than it does in air. As it turns out, sound actually travels at different speeds in air as well, and it depends upon things like humidity, air pressure, and especially temperature. At zero degrees Celsius and zero percent humidity, sound travels at 331 meters per second. It travels faster as the temperature and the humidity rise. Now here's the formula we're going to use. C represents the speed of sound, T is the temperature, and H is humidity. And so here's our whopping large formula. So as you can see, temperature factors in much more than humidity. Now let's just keep our equation up here and calculate what the speed of sound would be at 25 degrees Celsius and 50% humidity. When we do the calculation, we come up with 347.17 meters per second, which is faster than the 343 meters per second I've been using. So by incorporating the speed of sound into our equation at 343 meters per second, we're inducing an inaccuracy because that's really the speed of sound at about 20 degrees Celsius with low humidity. So the way to actually make our sensors more accurate is to measure the temperature and the humidity and factor that into the speed of sound. And so we're going to do exactly that. Now, in order to factor in temperature and humidity into the equation, I've added another sensor to our circuit. Now, this is a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. You may be familiar with this device or with one of its cousins, like the DHT11. The difference between the DHT22 and the DHT11, other than the fact that the 22 is a bit more expensive, is that the 22 is more accurate. It's accurate down to 0.1 of a degree Celsius, whereas the DHT T11 is accurate down to 1 degree Celsius. It also spans a wider temperature range, although in our application that's really not that important because we're indoors. If you don't have a DHT22 though, you can apply a DHT11 and get similar results. So let's take a look at how I've wired the DHT22 into our circuit. Now we're going to start off by keeping the HCSR04 wired up, but we'll ignore the wiring for that right now and concentrate on the DHT22. I've connected the 5 volts from the Arduino to the VCC pin on the DHT22. Next, I've connected pin 7 of the Arduino to the data pin on the DHT22. Now you could use a different pin if you wish, you'll just have to change the sketch accordingly. The third pin of the DHT22 is actually not connected to anything and is just left alone. And finally, the ground connection is connected to the Arduino's ground. So now that we've connected the DHT22 up to our circuit, let's take a look at the sketch we're going to need to run. Before we do, though, I want to run a quick sketch just to make sure our DHT22 is actually functioning. Let's take a look at the code that we'll be using to test our DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. Now, we are going to need to install a couple of libraries to use this code, although we'll only be calling one library from our code, that library in turn is dependent upon another one, so both need to be installed. Now, unlike the new ping library, we are going to install these libraries directly within the Arduino IDE. And we will do that by using the Library Manager. So go up into Sketch and go into Include Library and pick Manage Libraries. And this will bring up your Library Manager. 
Now this is a list of libraries available to your Arduino IDE, but not necessarily installed. And there are two particular ones we're after. The first is the Adafruit AM2315 library. So filter the search by typing in AM2315. And this brings up the Adafruit AM2315 library. Click the More Info link and it'll open up a button on this side. Click the Install button and the library is installed. Very simple. But as I said, this library is dependent upon another library called the Adafruit Unified Sensor Library. So let's filter by Unified Sensor. And this brings up a list of libraries. Go down to the bottom and right near the bottom, second to last on mine, is the Adafruit Unified Sensor Library. Again, click the More Info and click Install. And this will install that library. Now let's look at the code. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call that first library that we installed. So we include dht.h. Remember, this library in turn will call the other library, so we don't need to declare it in the code. Then after that, we'll define a couple of constants. The first is DHT pin. This is where the data pin of the DHT22 is connected to. And in my case, I've connected to Arduino pin 7. Now, if you've chosen another Arduino digital I.O. pin to connect to, just change the number accordingly. Next, we need to define the type of sensor because this library is capable of driving a number of temperature and humidity sensors. We're using a DHT22, so we've defined the constant DHT type with a value of DHT22, which, by the way, is also known as an AM2302. They are the same part. Next, we have to initialize a sensor, and we do that with this line. We pass the DHT pin and DHT type to it. And we'll define a couple of variables, one that stores our humidity value and the next one that stores our temperature value. And we're making these floats because we want the decimal value. Then after that, we go into our setup. Once again, we're going to be using our serial monitor to monitor the results. So we start the serial monitor at 9600 baud, and then we initialize the DHT sensor with a DHT begin. And then it's into the loop. Now, the DHT sensors need a little time to stabilize, so I've added this time delay at the beginning of two seconds. Now, in actual life, two seconds may be a little long, and you can experiment by reducing this time delay if you wish. Uh, then after that, we simply read the uh, DHT22, and it's quite easy to do. DHT.readHumidity will get our humidity value, which we've assigned to this variable, and readTemperature will get the temperature value, which we've assigned to this variable. And then we simply print these out on the serial monitor and repeat the loop. So every two seconds, we should be getting a temperature and humidity value. So let's take a look and see if this is actually working under Tools. We will go to our serial monitor, and we're getting a temperature and humidity value. By the way, my serial monitor has a little bug where the first line often doesn't do a carriage or a turn. That's just normal for me. So as you can see, the temperature in the workshop is a little on the warm side, but not too bad, and it's 51.5% humidity. So that will certainly factor into our speed of sound calculation. So here's the sketch we'll be using to integrate temperature and humidity into our speed of sound reading so we can get more accuracy from our HCSR04. And it's really an amalgamation of the sketches that we've seen before. So we're going to include the DHT library for the DHT sensor, and we're going to include the new ping library as we did earlier. And then we're going to define a number of constants. Again, you've seen all of these before. The DHT pin is 7, so that's the data pin for the DHT22. DHT type is DHT22. The trigger pin for our ultrasonic sensor is connected to pin 10 of the Arduino, the echo pin to pin 13, and the maximum distance we set to 400 centimeters. So we initialize the ultrasonic sensor in the same fashion we have before. 
and then define a number of variables. Again, most of these you've seen before. A variable to store the humidity and the temperature value, another one to store the duration, another one for the distance. Now this one's new. This is the speed of sound in meters per second. And this one is the speed of sound in centimeters per microsecond, which is actually the value that we find more useful to calculate our distance. And this is the number of iterations that we're going to be using on the new ping because we're going to use the iteration mode on that to stabilize the readings. Again, we'll initialize the DHT sensor, we'll set up the serial monitor in our setup, and initialize the sensor over here. Okay, now we're going to go down to the loop. Now, we've got this time delay again for the DHT22. Again, you could uh, experiment with this. You might not have to give it a full two seconds because it's going to delay the readings a bit. Um, and then we read the humidity and temperature value from our sensors. Now, here's where we do the calculation. So the speed of sound, as you recall, is, um, is this number, 331.4, multiplied by 0 0.606 times the temperature plus 0.0124 times the humidity, and that will give us the actual value for the speed of sound at this particular temperature and humidity. Then we'll convert that to centimeters per microsecond by just dividing everything by 10,000. And now our duration, as we did before with the new ping library, our duration is just uh, sonar ping median iteration. So we're going to go five iterations and get the average duration. Now we're going to calculate the distance the same as we have before. The distance is the duration, which we're dividing by two because we're making a round trip, and multiplied by the speed of sound in centimeters per microsecond. And finally, we just send the results out to the serial monitor. So let's give this a test and see if it's a bit more accurate now that we've factored temperature and humidity into the equation. All right, so it's time to test out our new and improved sketch, factoring in temperature and humidity. So let's put this down at the 40 centimeter mark to start. I'm going to try to get this pretty accurate. 39.93, 39.86, 39.88, 39.89, 39.90, 39.91. Again, some of this is because, of course, I'm not that steady. 39.99, very close. Okay, down at the 50 mark now. 49.95, 50.29. We seem to be within a quarter of a centimeter, which is not too bad at all. Here's the 20 centimeter mark. 20.02, 20.09. It does indeed seem to be more accurate. Now there's one other way that you can make your device even more accurate that I wanted to mention. I'm not going to demonstrate it here, it's just basically in theory. It is quite possible that I may have the uh, head of this HCSR04 not exactly lined up with the beginning of the ruler. I tried to do that and I actually tried to line my ruler up with the outside of the transducer surface rather than the grating on the front of it. So uh, it's possible that by moving the sensor back and forth just a little bit I might even get some increased accuracy. And you could do that mechanically, or if you found out that your readings were always off by, let's say, a quarter of a centimeter in the same direction, simply add that at the end to compensate for any misalignment you have. But as you can see, by adding temperature and humidity into the speed of sound equation, we have greatly improved the accuracy of our HCSR04. Now, there's a couple of other tricks with the HCSR04 I want to show you, and one of them that I want to show you now is how you can actually eliminate one of the wires that we're using to connect it to the Arduino. Right now, we're using both the echo pin and the trigger pin, but there are ultrasonic sensors that only have one pin out, and the actual pin is used for both an input and an output. It's used to accept the trigger pulse and to deliver back the echo pulse. And you can run the HCSR04 in three-wire mode as well. I'm going to show you that right now. In order to run the HCSR04 in three-wire mode, I've simply taken both the echo and trigger pins and connected them both to pin 10 of my Arduino. Again, you could use any pin you want. 
Now let's take a look at what I need to do in the code in order to account for that change. It's very simple when I use the new pin library. All I've done is I've set both my trigger pin and my echo pin to point to pin 10. The rest of the sketch is absolutely identical. Okay, let's just give this a quick test to make certain it works just as well in three wire mode. Let's put it down at 20 centimeters. 20.51, 20.03, pretty good. Let's uh, let's go to 36 centimeters. 36.10, 36.31. It does indeed seem that it is working just as well in three wire mode as it does in four wire mode. And the beauty here, of course, is I've saved one of the I.O. pins on my Arduino. And this can come in very handy when you're using more than one HCSR04 sensor, which you may indeed want to do. In some robotics projects, you may want a sensor in the front or in the back. In fact, you can connect a number of sensors up, and the new pin library makes this very easy. So now let's take a look at a circuit that has more than one HCSR04. So as I already have an HCSR04 attached in three-wire mode, I decided to attach my second sensor in three-wire mode as well. You don't have to do this, of course. You could attach them both in the conventional fashion with a separate trigger and echo connection, and they will work just fine. But here's how I hooked up my sensor. I took the 5 volts from the Arduino and attached it to the VCC on the HCSR04. I took both the trigger and the echo pins and tied them together because I'm working in three-wire mode. And then I attached these to pin number five of my Arduino. Now, of course, you could use a different pin number if you just change the sketch accordingly. And then finally, I attached the ground to the Arduino's ground. Now, I've also kept the DHT22 in my circuit, although I don't have it illustrated here because I thought it would just make the diagram a bit too busy. Now let's take a look at the sketch that I'm going to use to talk to the two different sensors. Now this is just a modified version of the last sketch that we used. Now you can see it starts off in exactly the same fashion. I include the library for the DHT sensor for the temperature and humidity, and of course I include the new ping library. Then I go and define a number of constants, which again are very similar to our last sketch. These two are just for the DHT22. And these are the constants I've defined for the HCSR04. Now you'll notice instead of trigger pin and echo pin, I've changed it to trigger pin 1, echo pin 1, and trigger pin 2, echo pin 2, to represent the two different HCSR04s. Since I'm running in three-wire mode, I've got my trigger and echo pins pointing to the same connections. And so my trigger pin 1 and echo pin 1 are connected onto pin 10 of the Arduino, and trigger pin 2 and echo pin 2 are connected to pin 5. Again, if you elect to use different pins or use four-wire mode, just change the numbers over here accordingly. Max distance is going to be shared between both of the sensors. I've left it set at 400 centimeters. Now here is how we actually initialize two different HCSR04s. I use two new pin commands, and on each one of them, I create a new object. This object I'm calling Sonar1, and I just pass it the trigger pin, the echo pin, and the maximum distance. And this is Sonar2, and it gets also passed its trigger pin, echo pin, and the maximum distance value. You can continue to add more sensors in the same fashion. Then after this, I define a number of variables. Again, these are the same ones that you saw in the last sketch, with the exception of the fact that I've taken distance and duration and split them into two independent variables. So now I have duration 1 and duration 2, distance 1 and distance 2. Everything else, again, is the same as the last sketch. We'll initialize the DHT sensor, and we'll go through the setup again with the serial monitor and starting the DHT sensor. 
Now, I've, you've noticed over here, I've changed this delay slightly. I used to have this delayed at two seconds. I've delayed it down to one second, and that's because there are more delays that I'm inducing in this sketch. So I didn't want the total delay to be too long. Again, I think I've been a little too aggressive delaying for a full second. So you can experiment by reducing that value, and it'll probably work just fine. This is the same as before, where we get the temperature and humidity values and calculate the speed of sound. If you elect not to use a DHT-22, you can just substitute all of this with our standard 343 meter per second value for the speed of sound. Now we go and measure the duration. The duration for the first sensor is measured over here using the iterations command like we did before. And then I've added a delay between the sensor readings. I've done this for a reason. I wanted everything to be able to stabilize before I read the stuff off the second sensor. Now once again, I think I've been far too aggressive by adding a full second delay here. And you can probably reduce this by quite a bit. And you may indeed want to do this. In real life, I don't think you'd actually want to let a full second pass between these because on a moving robot, it could travel quite a distance within a second. Then I just measure the second uh, sensor's duration using the similar type of command, sonar 2 ping median iterations. And then it basically is the same as the last sketch. I calculate the distance for both using their duration values, and I send the results out to the serial monitor. All I'm sending out to the monitor this time is the value for distance 1 and for distance 2. I'm not including all of that temperature, humidity, and speed of sound information because I thought it would be a bit too busy. So now that we've seen the sketch, let's see how it works. So let's test out our dual HCSR04 arrangement. Now I've mounted my second HCSR04 on my Sautilus breadboard and it's at a right angle to the original one so it's facing back into my workbench over here. Now I don't think I've necessarily got this ruler lined up correctly, it's just to give a rough indication so I'm going to put this roughly around the 10 centimeter mark. And we're getting readings 10.70 centimeters. As I bring it a little bit closer, here we have 6.87 centimeters. Bring it further back a bit, 21.97. So the second one is definitely making readings. And as is the first one, I'm going to put this around the 20 centimeter mark. And we're getting 19.53, 19.8 on the first one. Move it back to 40. Again, I'm getting a good reading uh, down in around 10 and another good reading over here. So both sensors are functioning. Now you'll notice a slight delay in the readings and that of course is because of delays I induced in the code. As I said earlier, you can experiment by reducing those delay times in order to make your sensors respond quicker. Well, that about covers it for our video on the HCSR04. I hope it's given you a better idea of how you can use this versatile little component in some of your own designs, be they robotic projects or otherwise. Now, if you'd like to get a copy of the sketches that I've used in this video, the easiest way to do that is to visit the accompanying article on the DroneBotWorkshop.com website. You will find a link to that article in the description of this video. One thing I've added to the website on all of the articles, including this one, is a resource box, which has some handy links, plus links to zip files that include all of the code that I've covered in the articles. So I think you'll find that very useful. Now, if you have any questions about what I've covered here today, please put them down in the comments. I love getting comments from you guys, and I try to respond to them as quickly as possible. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. It would really mean a lot to me. So until next time. Take care of yourselves. I hope to see you soon again in the workshop. Bye for now.